Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Rain moving in and it will not be moving out anytime soon. Find out just how much we're expecting for Friday that's coming with a near record chill. Questionable arrest tactics, the allegations being made tonight against Detroit police by one of their own officers. A local father wanted his daughters to get vaccinated. Well, now police are investigating sexual assault, allegedly at the hands of the man giving them those shots. Good to have you with us tonight at 11. The two young women came to the Lincoln Park Kroger for their COVID vaccines. What they say happened behind closed doors has launched a police investigation. Our Mara McDonald live in Lincoln Park tonight. Mara, their father alerted both the store and the police immediately. He sure did, Karen, and that police report has been filed and Kroger Corporate tells us, yes, they are aware. Let me show you. You know how hard it is trying to get get people to get that done and I've been I've been on them a while about this. Despite not wanting to get the shot, Davis prevailed upon his daughters to get the vaccine and they all headed to this Lincoln Park Kroger. The girls are 19 and 22. They were escorted into a room individually with the blinds closed on the window. When his first daughter came out, they had kind of a blank look on her face and I was looking at her and I, I'm thinking Maybe it's from just the needle, you know. He knew something was up. Then the second one came out and asked him the question, which made him see red. She says to me, Dad, do they, do they supposed to squeeze your breast while you're getting, getting, doing a shot? I said, no, they don't supposed to do nothing like that. The girls told police the man administering their vaccine, who Davis says was probably in his mid fifties, fondled their breasts, not brushed against them, but actually squeezed them. My daughter's looking at me in shock. It felt like I led them to slaughter. You know, it's, it's, it's bothering me. He immediately went to the Kroger manager, who was appalled, and then went to the police. Officially from Kroger tonight, quote, the individual in question is not currently administering vaccines. We are working with local law enforcement on this open investigation and cannot comment further at this time. Back here live, Davis says that one of his girls said to him, you know, I said to this man as this was happening to me, you know, what is what's going on here? What you know, is this part of it? She says he didn't answer her. Instead, he told her to look the other way. Police want to know, has anybody else had any kind of experience here that is similar? We're live in Lincoln Park tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, some disturbing allegations there. Thank you, Mara. Holiday weekend just about here, but right on time, so is the rain. Yeah, so let's send it over to bed. And those showers are going to stick around for the morning. It's going to be a make, make it for a messy commute. Yeah, Karen, if we're going to break this drought, we've got to get some serious rain in here. And unfortunately, it looks like one of those opportunities is during tomorrow's drive. And the showers are already starting to push into our west zone. Storm Tracker 4 is showing that. It's pretty light stuff right now, but the later we get tonight, uh, this stuff is going to intensify. Right now, it looks like Livingston and especially Washtenaw County seeing most of those showers hanging around. We'll see a lot more of them through the overnight hours, and you can tell as we get closer to daybreak, the showers do start to intensify. Pretty consistent rain there by about 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. By lunchtime, this will start winding down, but I don't think we'll be completely done with it, at least on the east side, until about 2 or 3 o'clock. So the bottom line is it's about a 12-hour window from 1 a.m. tonight to 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Everybody's going to get a little bit of something, and the biggest impacts will be from that slow drive tomorrow morning. Coming up, we'll talk about temperatures because they are not where you would expect them for Lake May and see what the weekend holds as we head towards the holiday. That's all in a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Ben. And be sure to wake up with the Local 4 News Today team to get the latest on the Memorial Day forecast with Brandon and Paul. Kim will also be breaking down all of those big construction projects if you are headed out of town. Weather and traffic on the 4s tomorrow starting at 4.30 a.m. Bombshell accusations tonight against the Detroit Police Department involving questionable arrest tactics and they're coming from a longtime officer. Now the gist of the complaint is when a vehicle is pulled over and they find a weapon, officers are instructed to arrest everyone whether or not they're involved. Jason Colthorpe investigating this tonight. He's at DPD headquarters with more. Jason. Devin, this longtime officer who doesn't want to be identified works out of the 10th precinct. He's been on the force for more than 30 years. He says when it comes to these arrests, it's basically the department 
padding its stats. They're not right. They're not legal. And he says they've been going on since before the pandemic. And when I found these allegations of um, wrongdoing and people having their rights violated, I could not stand by. When this Detroit police veteran learned of a standing order to arrest everyone in a vehicle when someone is carrying a concealed weapon, legally or not, he says he took it to his superiors. And when I, I questioned him about it, and both of them said, we got our orders. And one of them even went as far as saying, look, I got my orders. I'm trying to get confirmed, and it's not my choice. I've been ordered to do this. He also alleges that probable cause for these traffic stops usually has little to no merit. It's troublesome to me because these are mostly young black folks, young kids, and now these kids have um, a, a record, so to speak. We definitely take that very seriously and we will investigate it. Detroit Police Assistant Chief Todd Bettison says any directive like that flies in the face of everything this administration has done. There's no policy. Under Chief Craig's leadership, we have been 100% transparent. And the tone is we don't have quotas. We don't, we don't set standards where we say you have to go out and make that arrest. Now, the officer says once he raised these concerns, he was basically ostracized, labeled a troublemaker and reassigned. Now, the assistant chief raises an interesting point. He says they're going to investigate this, but they're also going to investigate why this officer who he says if he's a 30 year veteran, he should know better than to just go to his superiors on this. He's been around long enough to know you can go way up the food chain with this and it will get a closer look. Devin. Well, let's go down the chain from the arrest, Jason. What's happening when these charges then make it into court? Well, attorney Todd Perkins, uh, who represents this officer, says the cases he's seen uh, are getting thrown out on their merits, even by conservative judges. He says he also represents another officer out of the 8th precinct, precinct who makes these same allegations, as well as 15 clients who've been arrested for this mm. add it all up and he says it's smelling like probably a whistleblower lawsuit maybe another kind uh. of lawsuit all rolled into one but yet to be filed stay tuned for sure sure will all right jason as we look at the coronavirus numbers tonight, the state is reporting the lowest number of cases that we've seen so far this year. Encouraging news, 542 new cases reported today. That is the lowest since September. The state also reports 59 additional deaths. Also, Henry Ford Health System is enrolling children ages 6 months to 11 years old in a Moderna vaccine study. And more local events are coming back as the Ann Arbor Art Fair will return this summer. Tonight, the company that co-owns the private jet Governor Whitmer used to visit Florida says it will no longer allow politicians to travel on it. Today, the governor's office announced that they will pay for the $27,000 flight through her re-election campaign money and not through the nonprofit she controls, as we were originally told. We've also learned the governor's security detail and her daughters were also on board that flight back in March. PVS Chemicals is the group that uh, supplied the private jet, released the state tonight saying it was a governor's aide who initially contacted them wanting to use the jet out of concern for the governor's security. But in the future, PVS says it will deny all requests to fly candidates or government officials. An update now to that viral video recorded inside a Mackinac City hotel. We first showed you this last night at 11. The video shows the hotel manager verbally abusing a guest. Stop being an idiot. I'm an idiot. And, 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 and start thinking with your mind, okay? Stop being a Democrat, a dumb Democrat. Oh, okay. And go to your room, pack your stuff, and leave. Well, that happened to a Jackson mother during spring break at the Crown Choice Inn and Suites in Mackinac City. The incident started after the woman went to the front desk because the toilet in her room was flooding. Tonight, the owner tells us that employee has been fired. We move to Allen Park. The man accused of killing a parakeet inside a pet shop faced a judge. Ali Shahada of Dearborn is charged with one count of third degree animal killing. The surveillance video shows the 22 year old stomping and killing the pet bird after being denied a $30 refund. Shahada was granted bond, but is not allowed to have any pets in his home. Also has to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. 
Governor Whitmer proposes using a budget surprise, or should say surplus, to eliminate a funding gap in K through 12 schools. The proposal comes 27 years after the state overhauled the financing of public education. Now, under Whitmer's plan, schools would receive about $600 more per student from the state. Governor is also proposing spending $1 billion to upgrade school infrastructure, hire more teachers, more psychologists, counselors, social workers, as well as nurses. Ohio has given away the first million bucks in its COVID vaccine lottery. We'll have a look at which state is now launching its own lottery, offering more than $100 million in prize money. A customer face to face with an armed robber. The video showing how he stayed calm and managed to grab the gun. We're coming up first. A noise complaint at an Oakland County hotel leads to two arrests and a damaged patrol car. <laughs> What happened once the suspect kicked out the back window next?